Okay, so for week 16, I'm going to see how far we can get in completing the carbon footprint. So hopefully at this point, you have your code ready for week 16. And then we're just going to do a series of code challenges. So your first one is to uh, look at your f the food sources. Uh, a couple of you had already done this uh, on week, I think, 12 was the last time we touched this. Uh, actually, yeah, week 15, that's right, because we did the higher order functions. But even before that, in week 12, some of you had already done the second step here. Okay, so we're going to do this. Uh, and if you did do this, um, I, I want you to follow along even because I'm going to change some of the table render as well. Okay, but you should have already submitted your code for this. Okay, so this is my walkthrough of my solution. Actually, I'm going to code. I'm not going to walk through. I'm actually going to code. I think it's sometimes and it takes longer, but I hope it's more beneficial. So I have my live server running. I did play a little bit with my page just to try to center this. It's not exactly the way I want it. Actually, it's not even near, but at least it outputs uh, what I want for now. And one of the things we're going to look at is removing these because as we add more and more things to our form, this gets really unwieldy. So we'll end up cutting all these these two uh, and any that we add. But we'll do that in a minute. So let's do food sources. So 12 if it's prepackaged, 6 if it's good balance of fresh and convenient, and if it's hunted or sourced locally. Uh, it's two. Okay, so here's what I would do, and I had already set up the form, so I copied, and I bet many of you did as well, the evaluate food choices into a new div, which by the way, if you're taking my HTML, we should really get away from divs. Next time I teach this, I'm not going to use divs at all, just because semantically it doesn't mean anything, but not for this class. So evaluate food sources, I named it food source, camel case, made it required gave it a default of nothing with choices, uh, sources of food. My values were packaged, balance, and local. I did reflect on Steven's comment back in week 12 about using values here. To, then you don't have to write the logic. I actually was going to do that and I kind of thought through it and I decided against it because we still wanted to keep the string in the uh, object that we create from the class. You could do that reverse engineer it, but for now we'll just leave it the way it is. So here's where we'd start. So once you get this right done, so then we come over to main and on main one of the first things I did because this is starting to get pretty unwieldy as I formatted it with prettier just so I could have it a little nicer. And so now what are we going to do? Well, one of the first things I recommend um, before we even add this is let's do something a little more <laughs> standard. Uh, where I've done form, so if you remember right, we have uh, a reference to the get element by ID that we've brought in from global. And I had been using it inside the event listener. Um, it's not exactly standard. It is w sometimes the way you see it done. I can't even remember where I learned it but it was one of those things that I just did. So really these should be e.target. Okay, so when we have the event um, fired, we have the target, then we can reference the names that we've given them inside the inputs. Okay, so I could have done that a little easier, but I'm just going to copy that where there's forms. And here, I got two periods there. I guess I didn't need the period, so I can get it here. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to add e dot target dot food source dot value. Okay, so now this is the next item uh, in the form that I'm going to grab. That's cool. And now, now I need to move to my class. Okay, so I'm going to move to my FB file, and here uh, I'm going to think about adding food source. Okay, and in here because these are where we're defining the values in the class, and here's where our um, function constructors are actually calculating these items. And this is where, by the way, uh, on Steven's really good suggestion, had we been using values in here, 
um, we could have uh, just passed those into the class and not had to done this other step. But for us, we're going to leave that the way it is. So here I do this dot food source equal to food source. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do, because it just is cleaner, and I said this at one point, so now let's do it, where I'm call calling this method, which is just a function inside the class, what turns out to be the value, the key value I want, and that can create some confusion. So what I'm going to do is do cal, which calculate house, okay? And now this is going to break some other stuff when I do this. And this is where you really start to go, okay, and let's see. So cow food, right? Now this one should be fine. I could leave that the way it is. Well, actually, no. I'm actually going to do that one as well. Okay. Now I have to come back to this when I fix this, when I, um, because we'll have repercussions of uh, renaming. Um, not so much these because these are going to be called as soon as they're they're uh, called as soon as we create the new object from the class. Okay, so in this case, all I have to do is cal here, but I have to capitalize it, right? Again, I'm just doing a little bit, and this is so common. I can't tell you how common it is to write code, and then when you look at that code later, <laughs> you're like. God, that didn't make sense why I did that. Okay. Good. So this would be cow total. Actually, I shouldn't have to. I could keep it this dot total. Okay. Because here, inside of each of these, I'm saying this dot food points. Okay. So let's, we could, we'll see if, we'll see. And that's one of the things is one new change, you figure it out. So now we're going to add, right? We're going to add one more here. So this dot cow food source points. And we could just leave off points, but okay. <laughs> right? Because inside of there we could just say cow. See, I, I talk myself in and out of it all the time. Anytime you read your code, you should always be thinking, how could I have made that better? Okay? So here we go. Right? So what are we gonna do? Right. So if this dot food source right equals what? Right? Now equals strictly equals. So this dot food source, and if we don't want to remember, we can always, and this is something I regularly do, is I keep a split screen so that I can see multiple things. And I'm looking for the index file real quick. Because I know I have it in here. Maybe I closed it. Okay, maybe I did. All right, so what that's why I like to keep these open. Okay, so if it's equal to packed, right? And one thing we could do is just take one of the ones above it, right? But it is actually in this case, remember, we're looking at a string here, okay, because it's coming in as a string, it's going to be a string, and then. And also remember this, this is also good to remember. And some of you ca uh, had this happen when we were actually in code reviews that a JavaScript evaluates this. And when it evaluates this line, this expression, then it's going to either be Boolean, true or false. And that will determine if the next line is run. Okay. So this dot food source equal, strictly equal, both the data type have to equal and the value uh, as well. There's, anyway, I won't, I could go down a rabbit hole there. This dot food source points, right, would equal to six. Yeah, so now this is where I got to remember, I think it's 12, okay, right, else else if this dot food source equal 
What's the next one? Balanced. Okay. And this is where I'd probably start doing some copying and pasting to make my life a little easier. Let's see, what was the next one? Was it six? Six. Okay. And then what I would do is take this right here, that structure, to make laugh a little easier. Bring this up. Now I could, by the way, let my editor help me there. So in the last one it's local. And that would be two. Just to verify. Yep, two. Okay, so now I have the method. And I don't have to return anything because it's on the object now. Okay, because this dot food source points so now what I'd also want to do is come down here, right, and add this dot food source points. Cool. Okay. Let's see what would happen if I actually said reformat that. Uh, what does it do? Yeah, right? Much better. Okay. So now I'd come back over here, and I already have some data in here. But one of the things I would do before I go any further, because I know I'm going to have some rendering issues that I'm going to have to take care of. Okay, so I'm going to come back to sources, right? I'm going to go back to main. I'm going to fill out a new form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint after. Actually, no, I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And that way I can watch it as it steps through the, creati the creation, okay? And that's always a good idea, right? Because you want to catch, as soon as you code something, you really want to, it's so funny how I have to fill it in. Okay, so here we go. So now submit, it's caught this. So now I'm gonna bring this kind of over so I can look at this to make sure. So I'm gonna step in. So I'm gonna see what got passed in. Make sure, okay, food source local, good. That got passed in. So now I have all the things getting set up. Food, okay, local, that looks good. Now I know, by, by the way, here's where I would start jumping over things because I don't need to watch this run. Like I don't need this, I don't need this, but I do want to watch this. So I'd go, okay, here, here, here. So I said, so this should have been two, okay. So what I could do here, is I could actually go this dot food source points and if it's two it looks good okay good so I know that part runs and then we're doing the total which is awesome right so now we come back here and we just let it run so now that we've let it run we'd go okay right oh wow nothing got thrown off how come oh yeah why wouldn't it because the only thing we're pulling here are these items, okay? Are these fields key value pairs? So let's actually go do this uh, in terms of now preparing uh, to not, because notice that the food source is not in here because we haven't included it in our table render. So now over in our table render, over here, okay, which would be our render, there's a couple things I'd want to think about. All right, I'm gonna move this over. Actually, for a minute, I'll probably just drop that and kind of increase this a little bit. So what I want us to do here is this, right? So instead of just name, we're gonna do first, last. Okay, we're not gonna do house size. We're not gonna do food choice. We are gonna do we are going to have footprint and let's just go ahead and make it more explicit total and we still will have actions. So these are the headings that we know we need to update or that we are updating. So now let's come down to here and in here. So it would be first. And if you don't remember, right, this is where you can drop down into here and you could think about how could I grab those. I could go look at them in source, but one of the things I would do is I already have the edit setting here. So what I would do is go over to render and I would on my, right as I'm creating that right here, okay, as I'd hit edit. Now why would I do that? So I could hit object and then I could see 
Okay, here we go. Right? Here we go. That's what I needed. So first, last. And I kind of knew it, but I thought, eh, I'm going to go look at it. Oh, and while I'm there, total, did I, ch I left it as total, I just changed the method. Okay, so total. Food choice we're going to take out, but we're leaving that. Right? Yeah, so... Oh yeah, so action, that's why it was I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, so we actually only, let's see if this is right. I didn't need this other one, it should just be three, right? Because it's going to iterate over and create those things. Now while we're here, we could start thinking about the next step, which is how, what do we need to modify here, right? Because we do, but I always like to code and verify. Oh yeah, okay, oh, I did that way too quick, okay? Aha! Uh -huh. We already I already see one of the issues we're having right there. Okay, so we know we have a couple of things. Actually not too bad. Okay. One thing is our average now, okay, is thrown off. So we can fix that. Matter of fact, I think that'll be the code challenge. So we have two issues now, and I'm gonna throw this down as another code challenge for you. But let's just look at them real quick. Okay, so when I hit edit look what gets repopulated but what doesn't get repopulated so this one's pretty easy to fix so let's actually go fix that one right so in this case on the event listener I need form dot food source dot value is going to be equal to object dot food source okay so remember what we're doing here we're saying reference the form and by the way here I can't use e.target because the target in this case is the edit button it's not the whole form okay so I can't get e.target off that but in this case this should work fine okay let's see let's see if it does okay Cool. That's awesome. So actually, I think what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and fix all these and then we'll actually stop at this point because it's getting a little long and talk about the next one, which is interesting, the water cons uh, consumption. So let's just fix this. So let's go back up. If you remember right, I had a function and I even said when I wrote it that I didn't like it. So I'm going to think about TRs, right? Because in this case we're doing a row, and in this case the cell would be a TD. Okay, and then TD1. Now, what do we remember about this? That these were in reverse order, right? I should be using multiple selection, but I'm not. Okay, and then new cell, another one. So remember, cells are TDs, okay? And then we append, we have, the set, we have the label, which is the average. So remember, what do we have here, right? Oh, it's not there, it's broken right now, okay? Because live server is picking it up. So this would be new TD, just to keep it the same first. Because when you're changing things, when you're changing names of things, you really want to first, and this would just be TD. I think that's right. Okay, so let's see. Now what we want to do here is come down new row. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the first error was because I put row here and I changed the reference, right? So what we want to do here is in here. This is where I'm doing control, right? And I'm going to go backspace and I'm going to do new TR. Okay, at least I did it there. Let's see if that fixed it. Cool. So all we've done now is just given the names what they are. So now what do we have to think of is we want the average to be here, right? And we want the total to be underneath the total, okay? Because this, so we're creating more than we need. So even though we're going to delete them, remember they're done in reverse order, okay? So let's think about this, right? So this, which one, the TD, 
uh, one has got the foot right now the way we have it here. So what would happen, and this is kind of like, you know, what would happen if we just did that? Oh my gosh, it actually worked, right? Because what we did is we said we didn't need two of them. Now we could talk about making this look better, but for now it works fine. Let's see if our edits work. Good, our edits work. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so then let's just go ahead and submit. And does our deletes work? Those work as well. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop this one and then I'm gonna set up the next one because this next one is going to be a bit more interesting, I think, to uh, challenge and I just want us to give it some thought before we start coding.